matter what other people I say. I am so sorry. I asked you a question, a Andy, so and now I, I have to interrupt you. I, I apologize for that. We have to take you straight okay. to Milwaukee to the police department there for this press conference now underway uh, as a result of a police-involved shooting and then looting and uh, burning of buildings last night. We have not been challenged in years. Um, but in a sense, we have also responded. Um, this morning, I was in the Sherman Park neighborhood, and I saw dozens, if not hundreds, of volunteers, people from churches, from the community, from the neighborhood, who were there to clean up after last night. These are people, good people, who live in this community, who care about this community, and want this to be a safe community, a clean community, a community where they can raise their families. These are the people that we are all concerned about, the people who live in this neighborhood, who deserve to have a safe neighborhood. Ironically, that is the reason that the officers were in the neighborhood yesterday afternoon, to preserve the safety of this neighborhood, to make sure that families could play and individuals could use the streets. So I want to begin by thanking all of the volunteers, all the residents, all the churches that came out this morning. They recognize that this is a community effort and to make this a safer community, the individuals need to be involved. I spoke to many people this morning, including a conversation I had with Governor Walker. Governor Walker and I have had our political differences over the years, but we talked about what happened here, about what happened in Missouri, about what happened in Maryland. And this is the, the decision that we've reached together. The National Guard will be activated, but it will not be deployed unless Chief Flynn decides to deploy it. 125 members of the National Guard are on their way to Milwaukee as we speak. Um, and again, they will be deployed if Chief Flynn believes that that is necessary. I'm hopeful that that will not be necessary, that calm will remain in this community, and that we will not have to deploy those individuals. But if it is necessary, we will do so. I also want to take a minute and talk about the incident that precipitated what we saw last night, specifically the officer involved shooting that occurred yesterday afternoon. As I said last night at midnight, I received a call at a little before four o'clock regarding the officer involved shooting. I went to the scene and I talked to the command staff who was at the scene at the time. When I left there shortly after five o'clock, um, I would say that the situation was very, very much under control. There were people who were gathering, um, but it was a peaceful situation. Obviously, there were emotions uh, because an individual had lost his life. And I think we have to recognize that as well, that a young man lost his life yesterday afternoon. And no matter what the circumstances are, his family has to be hurting. I have a 23-year-old son. Um, so I can't imagine what his parents are going through. I also have to say this though, um, I have not seen the video. There was a body camera that the officer was wearing. Um, that video will be under the jurisdiction for the time being of the state of Wisconsin because the state of Wisconsin will be conducting the investigation. I have, however, seen a still photo extracted from that. And that still photo demonstrates without question that he had a gun in his hand. And I want our community to know that, that he had a gun in his hand. Now the police officer didn't know it at the time, but there were 23 rounds in that gun, which means that he had more bullets in his gun than the police officer had in his gun. And at the appropriate time, the state of Wisconsin will make available that body cam video um, because there will be questions. Undoubtedly, there'll be questions that arise from that. 
But I want our residents and anybody who is watching this to understand that what that police officer encountered was an individual running who had a gun in his hand. I also want to talk to the parents and, and members of our community for a second. Last night was unlike anything I have seen in my adult life in this city. I hope I never see it again. For every member of this police department, it was unlike anything that they had seen in their career. For every member of the fire department, it was unlike anything they had seen in their entire career. And I'm very proud of the way our police officers and firefighters responded under tremendous, tremendous pressure. What you saw last night was tremendous restraint by our police officers. Not a single shot was fired. Not a single shot was fired by the police. Chief Flynn will talk about the number of shots that we detected being fired as a result of our use of the spot shotter, but our police officers did not fire a single shot. That is tremendous restraint, and I think that all residents should be thankful to our police officers and our firefighters. I'm also happy to report that the four police officers who were injured um, have all been released from the hospital. Um, please keep them in your prayers, um, but these are individuals who put their lives on the line to make this neighborhood and all neighborhoods in this city safe. Um, they have all been released from the hospital. But again, I want to go back to the parents and residents of this city. This is still a very volatile situation, I believe. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Again, I hope the fact that, that people now understand that this individual had a gun, a loaded gun, uh, and was told by the police officer to drop it, I hope that that in some ways calms our community because that's what I'm seeking. I'm seeking our community, the city that we love, to be calm tonight and for the rest of the summer. So what is that going to take? It's going to take parents making sure that their sons and their daughters do not get involved in the activities that occurred last night. If we need to go to a curfew, we are prepared to do that. But we are not making that decision right now. But this is certainly the time, because I've been in every neighborhood of this city, and I know how parents feel about their children. And I've been to funerals and wakes where parents have lost a child. We don't know what's going to happen if we have a flare-up tonight like we had last night. So if you love your son, you love your daughter, you love your grandchild, tell them to stay away from this area. Stay away from this area. Let's calm things down. We are going to have an opportunity through the investigation to find out what happened. But I think what we saw last night is we saw a police department and a fire department that acted professionally, that did what it could to maintain the peace and order in this community. And we as a community owe it to each other, owe it to everyone to do all we can to restore order in Milwaukee tonight and for the rest of this week. Chief Lim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, spend a few minutes updating uh, last night's events and uh, also share with you a couple of uh, additional items. Uh, we're going to identify the name of the uh, subject that uh, was killed in the uh, uh, shooting by the police officer yesterday. I understand his name has already been put out on social media by some people. Uh, we'll confirm that. Uh, his name is Silville K. Smith. First name is spelled S-Y-L-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, middle initial K, last name Smith. Uh, he was born 4-11-93. Um, he does have a lengthy arrest record with the Milwaukee Police Department. Also going to advise you that uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, several shots were fired in the area of MPD District 7. Uh, it does not appear the building was hit or anyone was injured. Uh, but the uh, shots were, in fact, heard by the officers. Overnight, a total of uh, 17 arrests were made. 
Eight adult males were arrested for state disorderly conduct. Three adult females were arrested for state disorderly conduct. Two juvenile males were arrested for state disorderly conduct. Three adult males were arrested for burglary and one juvenile male was arrested for burglary. Um, as of my recounting now, uh, all of those we arrested have had prior criminal records. Last night, uh, the mayor alluded to the fact that our shot spotter gunshot detection system uh, recorded numerous shots fired in the vicinity of this uh, area last night. Um, the total number of activations was 48. Now, that doesn't mean 48 shots were fired. It means 48 different activations. Some of these activations were six, eight, or ten shots fired all at once. That's a single activation. But there was a great deal of gunfire uh, in the area last night between uh, 30th and 51st and Keith to Center. Seven squads were uh, damaged last night. One unmarked squad, as you have seen, was set on fire. One marked squad was uh, smashed by rioters and totaled. Uh, another marked squad was hit by gunfire, single shot to the trunk area. As you saw last night, we used the Bearcat as a means of protecting our deployed officers. That was hit by eight rounds of gunfire last night. Two of those rounds struck the windshield. One squad and one wagon were struck by bricks, breaking their windows out. We had six businesses set on fire last night. The BP gas station at 43rd and Burleigh was destroyed. The O'Reilly Auto Parts at 35th and Fond du Lac was destroyed. Jet Beauty at 35th and Burleigh was burned. The BMO Bank Branch at 36th and Burleigh has been heavily damaged by fire. Liquor stores at 22nd and Fond du Lac and 21st and Hopkins were both heavily damaged. The one at 22nd and Fond du Lac was destroyed. Obviously, the loss of all of these businesses is the loss of dozens and dozens of jobs in that community, as well as amenities that uh, many of us take for granted in a livable neighborhood. Uh, during last night's uh, disturbance, a 16-year-old female was shot at 43rd and Burleigh. She was transported to the hospital for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. She was apparently hit either by a stray bullet or uh, you know, uh, other rounds being fired by the crowd. Uh, we have no reported uses of force by the police last night. As the mayor mentioned, uh, not only did none of the officers dealing with this disturbance use their firearms, we have no reports of them using their pepper spray, their uh, batons, their tasers, uh, or their hands uh, in such a way as to uh, take somebody to the ground. We had four injured officers last night. Uh, mercifully, they were treated and released, ultimately. A female officer of ours was hit by a piece of concrete and sustained a concussion and a laceration requiring seven stitches to close. Uh, another officer was stuck, struck by concrete, which injured his arm. Third officer was struck by concrete that was thrown at him and hit his shin. And another officer was injured by flying glass. Uh, when we uh, finish this uh, press conference, we are going to have a meeting with uh, pastors and members of the faith community to uh, update them on what we've learned about this incident and to uh, urge them to continue their work, those that have already started it on their own, as well as to coordinate work with us to try to keep the neighborhood peaceful this evening. It's very important that those people that are in the neighborhood are consistently giving a message of peace um, and, uh, and civility. Uh, nothing is being accomplished through uh, acts of violence. Um, the, uh, tonight we've activated our major incident response teams. Uh, that's a total of 150 officers who have been specially trained in crowd control and management. A number of them were at the scene last night. It's another reason why we've been able to police many protests over the last two years without major incident because these officers are very much trained in the dynamics of crowd control and group psychology and generally are able to affect peaceful protests without a major incident but we're calling up our members that have all been trained in that uh, we are going to have all of our officers in two officer patrols again um, we're holding over the day shift and the uh, evening shift and uh, and uh, 
swing shifts and uh, tactical shifts are all going to be extended as well. We're going to therefore maintain normal staffing in the districts so as to deal with the normal call for service and crime call load uh, while still retaining uh, many officers from our various task force and MERT deployments to uh, be able to reinforce areas that may be plagued by uh, disturbances. At this point in time, we do not anticipate outside jurisdiction help. Uh, we are very appreciative of the assistance we received so far and the offers of assistance we received from our federal partners. Uh, the Sheriff's Office has contacted us and they are deploying numerous extra deputies tonight and they are going to coordinate their deployments in the vicinity with our command posts. Uh, we have a very sound uh, working relationship at the operational level with the uh, members of the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office and we suspect that that will uh, certainly uh, be useful uh, should there be problems this evening. We also have a very robust mutual aid system in a place with our suburban partners if that should be necessary. But we feel at least at this point in time based on our understanding of the situation, the size of last night's incident and our uh, work on trying to develop useful intelligence that we have sufficient officers of our own and certainly with the addition of the uh, Sheriff's Department personnel, that should be sufficient. But I mean, obviously we're not prideful here. If we need additional assistance, we will certainly uh, ask for it. Um, that's our update as to now, and uh, we will do our best to answer those questions that you have, and uh, you can start now. Can you just tell us the officer who was involved in the shooting? What race is that officer? Um, you know, normally I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that doesn't matter. Um, I know it does. I also know that there's been a lot of work on social media trying to identify him so that there are a number of people here who want to do that officer harm. Um, uh, he has several years of experience and is a very active officer. Um, and we are concerned for his safety. And uh, um, he has been uh, staying with relatives out of town. Jeff, can you talk about the initial stop? What was the re reason for the initial stop? And what has the body camera been able to reveal? Have you looked at um, First part of it, and I have to just give you my understanding of the initial stop. The officers have not been interviewed formally yet. Um, and DCI obviously ultimately controls this investigation. I can say I was advised it was a suspicious stop. They thought this vehicle uh, was behaving in a suspicious manner. It's a rental car, it turns out, or we have not ascertained its status as to whether or not it was lawfully rented or stolen or held over, we don't know. Uh, but this event, uh, I did look at the tape, and I can tell you this event probably took 20 to 25 seconds. I mean, there was virtually no time between the officer unhooking his seat belt turning on his body camera, getting out of the car, and immediately he was in a foot chase. And that foot chase went maybe a few dozen feet before he encountered this individual in a, in a uh, fenced yard bordered by two houses. Not really an alleyway, but a, a way between two houses. And the uh, incident occurred very, very rapidly. Um, so uh, it was uh, very fast. Uh, the individual was armed. Uh, the individual did turn toward the officer with a firearm in his hand, and the officer I can't tell when the officer discharges his firearm because the, it was a, this, it, with many body worn cameras, certainly all of ours, there's a 30 second delay before the audio kicks on. I don't know when the shots were fired. And again, this is now all evidentiary and uh, appropriately with DCI. But, uh, Would you encourage DCI to release that video for the public's benefit? Well, I think that's going to have to be part of an ongoing discussion because we have to weigh a couple of different benefits. We have to uh, weigh the uh, rights of the officer involved. We have to weigh the uh, concerns DCI has to have an investigation that's uh, untainted. I suppose there might be people out there who might say, you know, we might need to uh, protect a potential jury pool someday. I don't know. Um, at this point in time, it's not being released. Um, whether that changes or not, um, we'll have to see. And Mayor, answer that question. Mayor, there's people in the community who just don't believe whatever the police have to say. They want to see the video. They just told me down there on camera, they said, until we see the video, we don't believe anything. Uh, I would like to see the video released as soon as possible, uh, but I agree that the officer has not even been interviewed yet, is my understanding, the officer who was involved. Um, and there is 
There is the state investigation. But I do think it's in everyone's best interest to be as transparent as quickly as possible. Um, and so I'm hopeful that this will not be a delay, that there will not be a serious delay. But again, I, I respect the process right now. And, and I will assure this community that I will do everything I can to make sure that this is released. Do you want it released tonight before you say, I don't know what might happen? Um, again, this officer has his legal rights as well. Um, so I don't think it's appropriate for it to be released today. Again, as I said, I have not seen it. Uh, I did see a picture that was lifted from it. And I want our community to know that the individual had a gun. Now, again, I think that there were events that were going because it was so fluid. Um, but I saw a gun in his hand in the still shot that I saw. Why won't that still shot be released? Again, that's going to be up to, up to the state. Because you said last night was the worst situation that anyone in your department or your city... And, and again, I want, it to have, I want it to be released. I want it to be released as, as quickly as possible. Is he alive in that still shot? That I'm before, sorry. Is that before he was shot? I believe it was before he was shot, yes. I believe it was before he was shot. Standing up or... Uh, yes, he was. Yes, he was. Based have there been threats against... Have there been threats made against not only the officer, the patrol officer involved, but also other officers as well? Yes, there are people calling for violence against police officers. And how is that being handled? Are, are federal officials involved? Or? Well, we're doing the best we can to ascertain the source of those threats. And uh, if it requires federal assistance, they have, you know, raised their hand to volunteer to do anything we ask for. In the near, in the near term, we're trying to uh, track down the source of those threats and uh, not only identify if they're credible, but identify who's responsible. Can for you them. talk about how many threats or what the nature of the threats have been? I haven't got a number, but there's been threats of violence against Based police officers. Based on past investigations with officer involved shootings with DOJ usually taking the lead on Milwaukee police is involved, is DOJ receptive to requests that information be released before the completion of the investigation? Well, you know, we'll have to see. This happened last night, okay? I don't think there's anybody in the country that's released a body-worn camera of an officer involved shooting in 24 hours or 36 hours. I think Chicago set the modern record with a week. Um, so police departments in major cities across the country are aware of the delicate balance between what the community needs to know and our need to calm communities down or at least keep them informed and also the, uh, the processes and systems of the criminal justice process. There is a balance act. And every time one of these is uh, released, it's usually a chief erring on the side of transparency at some risk to the criminal justice process. I mean, you're going to find very few, um, you know, career attorneys who are going to say, oh, yes, get that out in public as fast as possible. You may get other police chiefs who say that. You're certainly going to get, you know, uh, some political figures who believe that very strongly as well as community activists. But um, this is a balancing act, and we're going to try to do our best here in Milwaukee to get that balancing act right. Family friends and protesters say yes, he was armed, but he did not deserve to die. Can you explain or kind of fill us in on how police are trained to react in these type of situations? Well, our officers are trained to uh, protect life, including their own. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the issue of anybody deserving to die. Um, that's that's really not the issue here. The issue that will be determined is whether or not, when the officer used deadly force, he faced a credible deadly force threat to himself or another person. Now, ultimately, that will be the conclusion of the investigation. Um, I know what I saw on the video. I know what I see in the still. It certainly appears to me that at the time he made that decision, it was a credible and a legally protected decision. But I'm After not... the release of the video, can you describe it with your words, what you see? Well, you know, what I, uh, what I saw, I think, is a, uh, a representation of a, uh, a very brief foot chase and a circumstance in which uh, the individual that was... Uh, confronted by the officer, um, had a firearm in his hand and turned towards the officer. I don't know when the trigger was pulled. I don't know the point of entry. I haven't, there's no autopsy done yet. There's like a hundred more credible questions investigators are going to want to get to. So when I get descriptive, I'm looking at a silent movie, all right, that doesn't necessarily tell me everything that will come out in a thorough investigation. So. Again, I'm walking on ice, too. I want to be transparent, but you know the fog of war. You know first reports are frequently wrong or slightly off, and then that's a whole other news cycle. So we're trying to be both open and contained at the same time right now. So I know what I saw based on what I saw, didn't hear, 
don't know what the autopsy results are going to be. Chief, certainly appeared to be within the lawful bounds. Chief, when we know that the suspect was hit twice, is that how many shots were fired? And also, was there any other video from other officers, from squad cars, or anything in terms of surveillance video that would shed light on this particular shooting? That's something we're looking into now. So I, I, I honestly, short term, don't know the answer to that question. But it's a key aspect of any such investigation is to look for other videos, other perspectives, uh, and so on. As to the number of shots that were fired, again, I don't know that. Um, I know the investigators have taken his firearm. I know the uh, scene was searched for shell casings. Again, the officer hasn't been interviewed, so I don't know exactly. I, I, my short answer would be not many, but again, I don't know. And Chief, you said that Seville Smith did not comply with the drop your weapon order? That's correct. Well, how about the gas station? People are saying there's been reports there, uh, people saying that the gas station owners were mistreating people of a certain community in the neighborhood. Do you guys have any record of police being called to that gas station recently? Uh, this is a busy area for us. We've been called to virtually every business there at some time or another. There was a recent controversy there. It was extensively covered by the local media involving the uh, proprietors of that store and some, uh, some unruly customers they confronted inappropriately. And so I do know there have been some issues there, but uh, we have uh, worked with the community and I know the mayor's uh, Office of Violence Protect uh, Prevention did extensive work in the neighborhood trying to get uh, the business uh, owners and the uh, local residents uh, on the same page, and my understanding was progress had been made there. And I, and I would point out, I would point out that, that I believe it was, from what I was told, it was community members who helped the three employees get out of that building safely, which I appreciate. There are people in the community who say that they insist that Smith was shot in the back. That's what people have been saying out of the scene. Can you say definitively that Smith was not shot in the back? Uh, I can, only reason I can't say it definitively is the autopsy hasn't been done yet. So I would, I would be foolish to try to say that de definitively. I do know that he was shot in the chest and the arm. I don't know that he was shot in the back. I'm not being cute. I'm not anything. If the autopsy reveals that. That will be news to me. But uh, to my understanding, that's not true. And it appears he was facing the officer as opposed to turning away. Yeah, again, you know, I'm going to have to count on what the angle is. You know, I, I, I saw what I saw. But, you know... If you've covered these kind of incidents before, body mechanics, kinetics, people are moving, the bullet's going 900 feet per second. You know, where, where the body was when the bullet was fired and where it was when the bullet hits can move inches. So I don't precisely know its angle. Basically. And, in that, and in that video, do you see uh, the suspect who was hit, do you see any muzzle flash from his gun? Did he fire? Uh, we don't have any reports that he fired his sidearm, no. We do have, you know, video of the officers, you know, administering CPR. Again, that still photo, can you show us, was the gun up? Was he holding it in his right hand? I mean, was it, where was it? Um, it was in his hand. Uh, he was raising up with it. And, uh, can you just show us maybe? You know, I, I don't want to, you know, play act here. You know, hopefully we'll be able to uh, provide you some useful information shortly and based on that you'll be able to evaluate the accuracy of what I'm saying now. Is it a matter, is it a matter, is it a matter of routine that the officer has not been uh, uh, debriefed or uh, questioned yet and is there a union uh, aspect to slow this down? Yes, there's, we were able to take a public safety statement at the time that there's an incident like this and then there's generally at least 24 hours passes before we do a full in-depth uh, interview with the officer. So is that officer on desk duty now, or what's his status in the police department? Yeah, he's on, he's on administrative status until further notice. That's uh, that's routine in these matters. Chief, any update on the burning of the buildings, uh, the investigation going on there? Is there a video of it on who may have been involved in this? What are you seeking and trying to uh, we're, do? We're, 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 we're working hard on publicly accessible social media to identify videos taken contemporaneously last night with the events of last night to see if we can identify people uh, engaged in law breaking including arson and uh, that's extensive and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of work needs to be done before we can the thank you very much thank you All right, you're listening to uh, the Milwaukee Police Chief Edward Flynn there. Still lots of questions uh, about the circumstances leading up to uh, the shooting of the suspect. 
uh, Silville K. Smith. Uh, you heard from the police chief there who said there is an image that comes from the body cam a video. The entire video he has yet to see, but he says there is an image that did show that that suspect uh, was holding a gun. And in the police chief's uh, view, this was a credible and lawful shooting. But still, lots of questions about what precipitated that shooting. Um, aside from that suspect having a gun. Uh, Ryan Young is covering the events there that have transpired as a result or after that police involved shooting. There was looting. There was uh, the 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 uh, some buildings such as the BP station behind you that were set afire. And so uh, Ryan, you've been also interacting with a lot of people there. People in the community, they heard that press conference from the mayor as well as the police chief. Does this fill any fill in any blanks for them, or does it just elicit yet more questions? No, Fred. Um, to be honest, I don't think people were listening to that news conference. In fact, a lot of them feel like it's too late. Um, the folks who are out here are very angry. In fact, um, every one of us who works out here have just spent the last 10 or 15 minutes or so getting a barrage of insults thrown our way because they feel like we have been ignoring the problem here in this community for far too long. They point to this BP as one of the places where they've had issues before. In fact, a few weeks ago, they believe one of the people who worked here came outside and fired his gun toward young people. No one was hit in that incident, and the community felt like that situation wasn't investigated hard enough. So they believe that was part of the reason why this place was targeted uh, last night. To go with what's been said so far, um, I would honestly believe right now, if they wanted something to be done, they need to release as much information as possible because on the other side of this building, there's almost uh, 100 people here who are still very angry about what happened. And they're talking about issues that have been going on in this community for quite some time. And they feel like this is all going to end in the same way. So people are saying, yes, this incident may have happened and the young man may have had a gun, but they simply do not believe it. And there are several people who are walking through this community saying that he did not have a gun. So until some evidence comes for it, I think it's going to be hard for them to believe that. You talk about the National Guard. Um, right now, talking to people here, they think that would be the wrong way to handle this, that if the National Guard shows up, there are people who are talking that they are willing to step up and go out in the streets and face them, and that more of this can happen. Um, several community leaders said there's a reason why the four businesses were targeted in this community. There are uh, businesses in this community that have been known to have issues with the black community for quite some time. So when you look back this direction and you see the damage that's been left here and the fact that officers still remain on scene, you understand what everybody's kind of holding their breath for because what happens next? And like a young man just said to me right now, the only reason why we're here, he believes, is because of the fact that this was burned down. He thinks if it wasn't um, burned down, that none of us would have shown up. So that is part of the reason why he thinks that this is starting to bring attention to the issues here in the Milwaukee area. So they're talking about that all the time, and that's a, a real feeling here. And I'm talking about real passion where people are coming up here and just yelling at us constantly because they want to know what's going on and when will it change? Mm -hmm. Lots of frustration. So, uh, uh, Ryan, sit tight for a moment because I want to bring into the equation CNN senior law enforcement analyst Tom Fuentes on the phone with us. So, Tom, perhaps you had a chance to listen to the press conference of the Milwaukee mayor, Tom Barnett, and the police chief, Edward Flynn. And while uh, the police chief said he has yet to see, uh, yet to interview, or an interview has yet to take place involving the officer um, that, that uh, fired the weapon, you know, killing the suspect, uh, but the police chief said he did see an image, a still image from the body cam video that has yet to be, you know, fully viewed, showing the suspect had a gun. And then he went on to say, at least according to the mayor, that, uh, you know, he had a gun in his hand, quote unquote, and it had 23 rounds in his gun. But then, of course, the question is, Tom Fuentes, just because someone has a gun, does that mean that indeed it is a credible and lawful shooting, which were the words of the police chief? What generally would have to happen um, to help justify this shooting? That's the question many people, particularly in that community, have. Well, that's pretty simple, actually, Frederica. If the person threatens the officer with a gun, especially if the officer yells to drop it and he refuses to comply, the officer has the right to use deadly force, uh, believing that his own life is in danger. Uh, or if the subject runs off after threatening the officer with a gun, then he has the right to stop that subject because he poses a threat to other he may encounter as he's trying to flee 
being armed that way, being armed and dangerous. So if what the mayor said and the police chief said is true, then it certainly sounds like a, uh, a completely justified shooting. Now, you know, it's, it's not even 24 hours, so they have to do the investigation. But it seems like nowadays nobody, nobody really cares for the details of the investigation that could take days, weeks, months, the forensic work to be done, the analysis of of all of the body cams and radio transmissions and all of the other aspects, plus the interview of the main officer himself whenever that takes place. So it's just, and, and the fact that, you know, we've had these uh, riots break out when it's been a white police officer and an unarmed African-American uh, male. In this case, apparently you have an African-American officer uh, being threatened with a gun, and it doesn't seem to make a difference to the community. They don't believe it. And, and the people that came into that community from out of it, outside the community, uh, probably could care less whether it's justified or not. They're going to cause trouble, and that's, that was their intent last night, and maybe their intent again tonight. Okay, and Ryan, back to you there in Milwaukee. You know, again, the police chief saying, and he kind of paraphrased, you know, his a synopsis of what uh, may have happened, saying that, you know, it, it was a suspicious stop um, in the first place as to why the police officer um, uh, pursued um, Silville K. Smith. But the police chief says, but this event took 20 to 25 seconds. You know, it led to a foot chase. It ended up in a fenced area between two houses. The suspect turned and had a gun in his hand. I know that, uh, Ryan, your producer also caught up with the Wisconsin State Senator, Alina Taylor, um, who also had um, some sentiments conveyed on all that has transpired from the police-involved shooting to even the, the, um, the burning of the buildings and the looting that has since taken place. Ryan, it looks like we lost your audio. Let's play a portion of that interview. Our producer caught up with the uh, state senator. You know what I see? You see the terrible violence to the property. I see the hurt. I see the pain of the people. I see the hopelessness of the people. I'm hurt for the businesses who have been in our community and, and have chosen to link arms with us and to be business partners in our community for the hurt that they've experienced. But what I know is that the trauma that exists in this community must be addressed. And so I don't care about just the buildings. I care about the human capital and the people that are here. So we need to take the trauma-informed care information that we've learned, and we need to implement it as wide and broad and in depth that we can. That's what we need. That's what I see. I don't care who. I'm willing to link arms if we're about creating solutions, but I will not be diverted on the negative. This is much I will be diverted on what are we doing to create the change, the help, the, to deal with the hurt that exists in this community. So this was as much about frustration that had reached the boiling point as much as shooting the Of course, of course, of course this is about the frustration. It's about the hurt. It's about generations of dealing with the hurt that has not been addressed. There is time for us to take action, and that time is now across party, across color, across geography, because in the end, it's all us. It's all us. And we have to figure out, what are we going to do? Ask yourself, what am I doing to be the positive change to heal the hurt, the trauma that exists at depths that's, that's beyond discussing? Let's think about it. Let's think about this. We're number one in the nation for incarceration of black men, for the least reading scores among third and eighth graders. Unemployment rates for African-American men completely off the charts. Infant mortality rate. Let's not talk about the lead in the water, in the soil, and the air quality. Let's not even begin to talk about the number of disparities that exist in children being taken for their home, not necessarily for neglect, but because of poverty. Let's not talk about the percentage of people that are in poverty. Now, all of that, just those things, exactly. Preach, my sister. Exactly. So this is not my district, but it's all my district. Because in the end, it's all of us, and that's the piece we've got to stop. we got to get past our silos. It's not about, is it your block or my block? It's about we're all in this together. So now the question, 
is what's going to create the change. Some jobs, some love and faith among wrapping around families and among community is what's going to make the difference. Not martial law. And thank goodness the governor has confirmed to me there is no martial law. The National Guard is not in control. Law enforcement is in control. They're poised to help. But what we're going to do is show as a community that we can love our way past where we are. I personally talked to the governor before I came to speak to you so I can speak facts. Is the, is the guard coming out at all? In any they are not. The guard is not in control. The guard is poised in case we need the guard. However, what we need are people to come and love on this community. What we need is to be able to move people past the trauma and the hurt that maybe you can't see. Some of us can only see the property damage, yeah. but others of us see the hurt and the pain that exists in this community, not just today, but that is constant. The trauma-informed care issues that we've learned about is what we have to deal with. And then lastly, Dr. DeGruy, Dr. Joy DeGruy, who was brought here by not only the NAACP previously, but also by SDC to deal with the Poverty Summit, has told us about the effects of, frankly, our history of America with slavery and how it has an, had an effect in this community. We're number one in the nation for almost everything that exists for African Americans. There is an effect to that. There is an effect to that trauma. And we need to deal with it realistically, and we need to address it head on. We can't imagine that the kindles of the fire of the pain that people experience are going to go away, Mayor. They aren't. The kindles are burning. And without attention, they will rekindle fires everywhere. We must deal with the fires that exist in the pains of our people. And that's going to take some love and some faith and some work and some jobs and some unity among all of us. Action. All right, Wisconsin State Senator uh, Lena Taylor there, um, clearly underscoring they want more answers, uh, Ryan, there in Milwaukee. But this really is representative of much bigger issues. Uh, are you hearing a chorus of that sentiment uh, that's very similar there? Absolutely, and a lot of people are frustrated at the fact that we're focusing on the buildings behind us and not the community pain. Their ideas, they want things to change. I almost feel like that news conference, you almost wish it was a speaker to be placed out here so people who are out here who are trying to actively protest could hear it. They can't hear those words. And on the other side, I did talk to a African-American officer off camera uh, this morning, and he was telling me how frustrated he is because he believes this is not the cases that have happened around the country. He feels this one is different, and he feels like all officers are being painted with a single brush. He says it's tough to go home to his family to try to explain what is going on in the community when he feels they're doing some good work in this community. Um, a larger conversation needs to happen, but I'm not sure with everyone yelling right now anyone's going to hear. All right. Uh, Ryan Young, thank you so much. In Milwaukee, we're going to continue to follow uh, that story. All right. Straight ahead.